Hello, this is Brian Casey of The Imaging Wire. We are here at RSNA 2025, and we're here in the booth of Riverine Technologies. We have with us uh, Dr. James Hillis. He is Director of Clinical Operations at Mass General Brigham AI. Dr. Hillis, thanks for being with us today. Thanks for having me, Brian. So one of the hottest topics in radiology right now, and has also been pretty hot here at RSNA, has been this idea of opportunistic screening. And um, one of the most promising applications of that is coronary artery calcium scoring. So can you tell us a little bit about like, like what exactly is opportunistic screening and how is it being applied to, to CAC scoring? Thank you very much again, Brian. And so coronary artery calcium is something that is used with a score to stratify somebody's risk of a cardiovascular event. And at the end of the day, this is important because it informs choices that patients make with regards to what treatments they're going to use to prevent a cardiac event from happening. Yeah. And so taking a step back, uh, coronary artery calcium is something that has actually been measured for many decades. Traditionally, it's been measured using something called the Agatston score. There are, however, a couple of challenges with the Agatston score. And so the first challenge with the Agatston score is that it's traditionally measured on something that's called a cardiac gated CT. And this is like a dedicated cardiac scan. You, you're going in for a cardiac scan. You were going in for the cardiac scan. It's, it's ultimately similar to a chest CT, but you are going in for a cardiac scan. And so you're having that chest CT, receiving the radiation, et cetera, for the purposes of just that reason uh, for getting the coronary artery calcium score. Um, and in addition to that, it's actually something where the radiation technologists need specialised training so that they can conduct that cardiac gated chest CT. Yeah. Um, and so that's one of the issues. The second issue is that actually there's a lot of manual work involved in calculating the coronary artery calcium score. Mm -hmm. uh, and so traditionally what has needed to happen is a radiation technologist or a radiologist goes through and will actually segment out the different plaques of coronary artery calcium to then calculate that against So there's some work there. Uh, agreed entirely, yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and so... One of, the, one of the key uses for artificial intelligence, as you say, is for something that's referred to as opportunistic screening. And so this is using studies that are performed for other purposes to actually make the use of them opportunistically yeah. to actually get more information out yeah. of them. And so one of the uses of artificial intelligence here is to actually automatically calculate a coronary artery calcium mm. score. But further to that, actually potentially calculated on routine non-gated chest CTs as opposed to the gated chest CTs because you've got a much broader population right. uh, who, right. who receives a chest CT. So and I could be going in for a lung scan and not even know that I have any cardiac issues and, and you can run the software on that. Uh, lung scan and find out like, hey Brian, you've got a really high score here, you need to change your lifestyle, you do some modifications. Now you did a study on this concept, uh, on this exact concept, can you tell us a little bit about what you found? Uh, yes, so we were conducting a standalone model performance assessment of the Riverain CAC Clear Read, uh, rather the Clear Read CAC um, device. What we did for this study is that we had close to 500 CT cases, they were taken from non-gated CT chest cases that we sent through this model to see how accurate it was in calculating the coronary artery calcium score. And what did you find out? And, and so t together with having these 500 cases, we'd actually specifically chosen the cases for this study such that a third of them were taken as consecutive cases so that we'd get distribution of what happens as part of the general population. But then two thirds of the cases were taken from patients who had a paired cardiac gated chest CT. Kind of the gold standard. Th the gold standard, which was for two purposes. One was to ensure that we had a breadth of severity of coronary artery calcium as part of the cohort. But then the second reason was we could actually compare the measurements on the non-gated chest CTs back to the gold standard measurements on the cardiac gated chest CTs. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. And what were some of the results? So what we found, so first of all, the comparison that we did was between the device when it was performing on the non-gated chest CTs to ground truth radiologists who had obtained measurements on similarly the non-gated chest CTs. 
the agreement with the Agatston score category or the coronary artery calcium score category was above 0.95 and the correlation of the Agatston scores or the coronary artery calcium scores was above 0.97. But then what we did was we actually also did this comparison back to the gated chest CT original scores and we found that the agreement for the categories was still above 0.95 and the correlation for the scores was still above 0.9. So there was still a very reliable measurement that was coming from the non-gated chest CTs by an automated model yeah. when comparing it back to the yeah. gold standard. That's awesome. Now, how, how do you think this could be used in a clinical environment? Uh, so, so I think the key thing is, as we were discussing before, the volume of patients who have a routine non-gated chest CT is so much greater than the number of people who have a dedicated gated uh, chest CT. Yeah. And so from that perspective, there are so many more patients who can opportunistically have this measurement obtained. Amazing. Now, what, what do you see happening in like the near future for uh, opportunistic uh, screening and, and this kind of scoring? Mm -hmm. So first of all, I think, I think ultimately radiologist patients, uh, they will be receiving these scores that they wouldn't have been receiving in the past. So that's, that's one clear difference uh, for what will be happening. Uh, secondly, actually, I think one of the areas that really excites me is there's a huge opportunity here to actually make medicine more personalized. And fr from some perspectives, like what we've been able to do so far with the coronary artery calcium scoring has been based on the methods that we've had, which are very much manual methods. But now we can actually automatically calculate these and actually develop sort of a greater understanding of exactly what these scores mean mm. and better tailor. Uh, at the moment, often, often what happens with these scores is that they're actually categorized into four or five broad categories. But it will actually be much easier to sort of come up with even more specific recommendations for patients based on their scores beyond just having these broad categories. Awesome. What's well, going to re be really exciting to see how this develops. Agreed. Agreed. Thank right. you very much, Brian. You bet. Dr. James Hillis, uh, thanks so much for being with us. You're welcome. Signing off from RSNA 2025 for the Imaging Wire, my name is Brian Casey.